my name is Bridger Faiths, and welcome to Master Stockman Consulting's educational video series on business power tools for agriculture. You know, in ag, we use a lot of tools and we're used to using a lot of tools. It could be as simple a tool as this T-post or maybe as useful a tool as this bell wagon. But today, we're really gonna focus on business tools for agriculture. You know, whether you're raising chickens and maybe selling some eggs at the local farmer's market, or even pro uh, selling produce from your garden, or you could be producing livestock. These tools will help you get you on the road to a profitable and sustainable ag business. We have seven videos in this series that'll help you. The first video is basic farm and ranch economics. Then we have business tools for agriculture. Then using the Wyoming Ranch Tools site. Then we have record keeping for ag. Then we have getting started in agriculture. And then we finish up with implementing the scientific process and implementing ag research. These videos are made possible through funding from Western SARE and we appreciate their support. And in this video, I'm going to talk to us about using the Wyoming Ranch Tool. I'd like to thank myself for that introduction. Again, my name is Bridger Fates, and today we're going to be talking about the online tools that we refer to as the Wyoming Ranch Tools. Now, don't let the name fool you. Uh, just because they say Wyoming Ranch Tools don't, doesn't mean they won't work in Utah as well. We've worked with a lot of uh, farmers and ranchers throughout Utah to teach them these tools, and they're used quite often there. Uh, the other thing is not to let it fool you is you don't have to be a, a full-sized ranch to be able to utilize these tools. So again, in these videos, we've talked about backyard poultry, we've talked about uh, you know, sheep operations, goat operations, those can all use those these tools that we have. Also in an earlier video, I talked about the two primary tools of for, for business tools for agriculture of partial budgeting and net present value. So we're definitely gonna go over uh, an example of each one of those today. Additional tools that we have on this site are these livestock tools. So we have a break-even budget tool, helps you decide when to sell your animals, especially uh, cattle and sheep is really what this one is, is designed for. We have a bull or ram valuation tool. Um, we have a cow valuation tool that helps you decide how much you can pay for a cow based on the number of calves that she's gonna have over her lifetime. We have a cull cow marketing tool. So as your cows get older and you're ready to sell them, uh, when's the best timing to do that? Can you buy feed for them? Those sorts of things. We have a price like calculator that, that none of you will probably use for a while. But if you're contracting animals, either uh, calves or lambs, sometimes there is what's called a price slide. Uh, and this calculator helps you uh, decide if that's a uh, good contract or not. There's a genetic investment tool to look at if you're paying more for a ram or a bull, how much, how long would it take you to pay that off? The stocking rate tool is one that I think you as students can use. And I have an example that we're gonna go through after. So we'll do the partial budget tool first, the net present value tool second, and then we'll look at this stocking rate tool. Cause I think it'll be one uh, that you might be able to use and, and use uh, fairly soon in the ag operations that you're thinking about. We have an AUM value tool to help you if you're looking at renting pasture from someone um, or if you have pasture to rent and you're trying to figure out how much it's worth. Then we have a market comparison tool. This is really if you're selling in auction barns or on video auctions, again, primarily cattle or sheep that we're talking about here. The fourth tool that we're gonna talk about and show an example in class is this relative feed value uh, calculator. It'll also be very helpful to some of you possibly. Uh, then there's this wheat price calculator and a sprayer calibration tool um, that probably are not something that you would use uh, immediately in your ag operations anyway. So let's start with the partial budgeting tool. So some of you, if you were paying attention, would remember that we did a hand partial budget 
looking at changing to a high twinning rate RAM. And so this is that same hand budget that I've entered into this system. Now, some important things on all of these tools, the light yellow shaded uh, squares are places that you can enter information. Um, and then the, the brown numbers are all calculated for you. So in this example, uh, for those of you who don't remember, we were looking at, at buying or paying more for a RAM that would throw more twins. So we were hoping to go from one LAM per U per year to 1.2 LAMs per U per year, and we had 20 U's. So what that means is we would move from having 20 LAMs a year to 24 LAMs a year. And, and would it be worth it to change and spend more money on that high twinning RAM? So as always with the partial budget, there's four questions that we have to answer. What are my additional costs? What's my reduced income? What's my additional income? And what's my reduced cost? So on this example, as we went through, my additional cost, well, I've got to pay for that price here, uh, multiple producing RAM at $650. Now that's just one time and he's, we're gonna assume that he's gonna last four years. We have some additional feed costs for use with twins. They require a little more feed. If we estimated that that's $5 per year for four years, that's $20 more per U with 20 U's. So that's a total of $400 more in feed that we could expect to pay uh, for these higher twinning ramp or U's. With those four additional lambs, we would have veterinary expenses on those lambs. So four lambs at $5 a year for four years, another $20. So that's $80 for those four lambs in the four years. And then uh, we might be using tags and other miscellaneous items uh, for those lambs. So four additional lambs at $2 a year. So that's $8 for the for the four years or another $32 total um, for the four years. In terms of my reduced income, I'll no longer be selling just 20 lambs at 80 pounds and $1.75 a pound. So 20 lambs for four years, that's 80 lambs total. And $1.75 times 80 pounds is $140 per lamb. So that gives us $11,200 per lamb that we're not going to be selling because we're not gonna be selling the 20 lambs, we're gonna be selling the 24 lambs. So that's a total additional cost and reduced income of $12,362. So what are we gonna be making additionally by buying this uh, higher producing ram? Well, now we're gonna be selling 24 lambs a year, still weighing 80 pounds, at $1.75, so that's 96 lambs total at a price of $140 or a total of $13,440 for the four years that this RAM uh, is available to us. And what's one of my reduced costs? Well, it's the RAMs that I was using on my use they're not, they were not as highly proficient as you saw. They only were producing one lamb per U instead of the 1.2, and they cost me less at $500. So I'm going to save the purchase of that $500 RAM. I account for the new, more expensive RAM up here at $650, and I save the $500 RAM for a difference of $150. Now, if we look at that over the four years, my total income and reduced costs will be 13,940 or a net income of $1,578 to moving to this more expensive RAM. Now, what's the benefits of using this online tool? Well, there's a couple of things. One, we add this sensitivity analysis. So let's say that I was 10% off in my estimations of these dollar values up here in the chart. So in the worst case scenario, if I was 10% off, I was 10% over on what I expected to get for revenue, 
and 10% under on what I expected to pay in costs, that means over the four years of this project, I would actually lose $1,052. Now, if I was more conservative, so I underestimated my revenue by 10% and overestimated the amount I was going to have to pay in costs by 10%, then I would actually be making $4,208 per year. So this sensitivity analysis helps you see a range of where you might expect uh, to, to get your actual profit or loss from this venture. The other thing that's nice about this model um, is it's easy to change numbers and see the results. So what if we decided what if we couldn't get a RAM bought for $650, but that RAM actually cost us $750? Well, with just a simple change, now we can see the difference in that net income or loss down here, right? So you can change these different numbers um, and get a result of a net income or loss here. So that's how this partial budget tool works. You can use it to look at, you know, changing from laying hands to, to a, a broiler operation, or you could look at it from changing from raising only sheep to raising a mixture of sheep and goats. There's lots of different things you can use this partial budget tool to look at. I hope that you'll learn how to use this and really it'll be valuable for you throughout your your career in agriculture if you will use this tool to make better decisions. The next tool we're gonna to talk about is this net present value tool. So this really helps us look at if we have to invest money upfront, how long will it take to pay that investment off? So in this example, this is a laying hen example. So we are, um, assuming that if we built a chicken coop or purchased a reasonably priced chicken coop and laying hens, five laying hens, that would cost us $1,500. Now we put in there an interest rate of 5% because you could put that money in savings. You might have to have a loan on that. There's risk that your chickens will die. So we need to have this interest rate to really be able to help us understand how much this money is worth to us today. So that's that $1,500 investment we enter for the coop and the hens. If we look at our annual costs on an operation like this, it may be something like $300 a year. That would be $200 a year in feed for the five hens. $50 for bedding a year and $50 for miscellaneous expenses um, a year as well for a total of $300. Well, how much could we make per year on five laying hens? Well, a highly productive bird may lay 250 eggs per year. So if we have 250 eggs times five birds, then divide that by 12, we get 104 dozen. Well, if we can get $5 a dozen and we have 104 dozen per year, that would be an annual revenue of $520. So you can see that we're making more than we're spending each year, but how long would it take us to pay off this $1,500 investment? Well, it turns out after five years, we'd still be losing $500. It actually takes us nine years to break even, nine years to pay for this initial investment of $1,500. And after 10 years, if we were doing this project, we would make $283.72. That's assuming those birds would last for 10 years and keep producing 250 eggs per year for 10 years, which is probably not accurate. But this tool is a great way to understand if you're looking at investing in something, you know, in this example, it was a chicken coop. It could be fencing. It could be a new bowl. It could be, uh, you know, a barn. So lots of different things we can use this tool to look at. If we're going to invest in something, how long would it take to pay off? 
It does show a chart down here too. So uh, the blue line shows that it intersects there right at year nine. Uh, and then that total is equal to the total here at the 15 year net present value. So that's how this net present value tool works. The combination of using those that partial budget and this net present value tool is really a valuable uh, skill set to learn as, as you start off in agriculture to understand the business side of, of ag operations. The next one I said we'd take a look at is this stocking rate tool. I think this one's interesting because let's assume that you have a neighbor that's got some acreage um, that he hasn't been using and you are thinking about getting some, some sheep to put on that acreage. So you go talk to your neighbor and you find out that he used to graze three cows and those cows weighed an average of 1200 pounds and he would have them out in his pasture for five months. So 150 days and there were five acres in the pasture and you asked him about how much did they consume? And he thought about half of the forage. He thought his three cows consumed about half of the forage. So you would enter 0.5 as pasture utilization. Then this calculator calculates the total production per acre uh, based on those three cows being out there for five months. So it estimates that there's 5,760 760 pounds per acre out there. So you're trying to figure out, well, how many sheep could I have out there if I ran sheep instead of his three cows? Well, that's this next calculator or this next section here. So we take the total production from up here, the 5,760 pounds, we put it in there. We assume that we're still going to be responsible grazers and only take half so that we give the grass an opportunity to regrow and be strong each year. We're going to have some heavy use out there. We're going to weigh 200 pounds and we want them out there for five months. And again, this pasture, it's the same pasture, it's five acres. So based on that, we could put 90 ewes out there for one month or this five months we could put 18 U's. So we could run 18 U's in the same space that our neighbor had been running three cows. Well, what if you're trying to think, well, I've got 25 U's. How long could I graze them out there on my neighbor's five acres? Well, again, you would enter that total production, 5,760 pounds. You would have the pasture utilization of, of half. So we're gonna take half, leave half. Again, good grazing management. We'll have those heavier ewes at 200 pounds. And we're gonna put 25 of those ewes in there. And the acres in the pasture is five. So how, how long could we graze 25 ewes on five acres? This calculator estimates that we could graze them for 3.6 months. So you can see this could be really handy in terms of if, if your neighbor or your dad or your mom or grandpa that has some acreage, that has some knowledge of when they used to graze it and you're wanting to use it, you can really use this calculator to get a good idea of, of what you can do on that property with different types of animals. The last of the calculators we're gonna look at today is this relative feed value. The way this calculator works is you go out, you would go out and look up online the corn price per bushel in your area. In this example, we have at $6.75, the soybean meal price at $360 per ton, and an average alfalfa hay per ton price of $200. So if you went out and did some research and found that, then this calculator helps you understand what other forage you might find is. So what if you found just some old uh, utility alfalfa, maybe it had been rained on, you know, not quite as, definitely not quite as good as, as the average alfalfa in this example, what would it be worth? Well, based on the results from up here, it's worth $177 per ton. But what if you could find some grass hay? 
Well, average grass hay would be worth $169 a ton if this is what uh, these are worth. If someone has uh, some specific hay like this one example is hay barley and they've done a feed test, you can enter the feed test information here in these yellow squares and it'll give you the value of that. So this individual's barley hay is actually worth $273 a ton. Well, what if your, your local feed store said they had a deal on some wheat mids or dried distiller's grain? Well, you can look at the value of this too. So based on these prices of corn, soybean, and average alfalfa hay, the wheat mids are $237 a ton and the dried distiller grain is $322 a ton. That's the value of it. So if your local feed store is selling this for $280 a ton, it's probably a good buy for you to use in your operation. If your local feed store is selling it for $400 a ton, you probably want to look at maybe just trying to find some alfalfa hay rather than the dried distiller's grain. So that's how this tool works. It really helps you understand the relative value of, of different feeds. Also to help you on this website, there are fact sheets. Um, there's a fact sheet that describes partial budgeting. There's a fact sheet that describes the net present value process. There's one um, for some of these others. So pasture leasing, sprayer calibration, market comparison. Those are all fact sheets that go through the tool and how to use that as well as the principles behind that. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you see how these tools can be useful in your analysis. We'll certainly be using these tools in, in the future videos to help you work uh, through decision-making and projects. And hopefully you'll enjoy the homework assignment associated with this video. With that, enjoy the rest of the videos and thanks for listening.